So what happens? Sally Hemings, uh, two of the children, Beverly and Harriet, Beverly is a male, William Beverly is a male, run away as white people. They are not formally free. They're not given free papers because if you wanted to be a white person, you would not take free papers because then they would know you're not white because that would mean you were a slave. And so, so they run away and disappear. And we don't know who these people are. And that's the interesting thing about paper. See, if you, if you have any paper trail, people can find you. These people just disappear. So we don't know what, where they are. Um, Madison and Eston Hemings uh, were freed in Jefferson's will, along with three other members of the Hemings family, John Hemings, Burl Colbert, and Joe Fawcett. Um, Fawcett and Colbert are grandsons of, of Elizabeth Hemings. Um, Sally Hemings is not formally freed. Um, she is given her time. Uh, Martha writes this, uh, that she's given her time years after Jefferson is dead, but in, she's listed as a free white person in a census in 1830. And they did a special census in 1833 in which they go around and ask black people in Virginia if they want to go back to Africa um, to, as far as part of emancipation and expatriation. And she says, no, I don't want to go back to Africa. Uh, and she describes herself as having been freed in 1826. And she's listed, at, which is the year Jefferson died. Um, she's listed as a free um, colored woman in that, in that census. So she's not formally freed. She's informally freed. And people always ask me, well, why didn't he free her? Uh, because this is, you know, this being the big, you know, if you love them, why don't you free them? And, you know, that's, I, I'm not, I didn't mean to say it like that. I mean, I just making it. But, because who, I mean, she was over, you couldn't, in Virginia, you couldn't free a slave below 21 or above 45 without saying how you were going to take care of them. That's number one. You also, if you freed a slave, you had to, from the 1806 law, you had to petition the legislature to allow that slave to remain in the state. And if they, it was not granted, they would have to leave the state. So it seems to me, looking at this to me, and, and also, I don't think Jefferson, and this is, again, thinking about a person's mindset, I don't think he would have thought it proper to free a 56-year-old woman. That's hard for us to, to think. But that would have been his, his mindset. The only woman he ever freed, um, well, his daughter, he freed her informally. She's going off to live as a white person. She had, she had to be freed, because if she had a child, that child would be a slave. So she had to be freed. But I don't think he would have thought it socially acceptable to free a, an elderly woman, who at that stage was an elderly woman. But the main things are petitioning the legislature. That would have been an utter admission. We would have never argued about this if he'd petitioned the legislature. And then, according to the other law, said, and here's how I'm going to take care of Sally Hemings for the rest of her life. The easier thing to do, and it's what they did, she moves into Charlottesville with her sons, and everybody accept her, accepts her as a free white person. And the children, um, Madison Eston, stay in Charlottesville until she dies. And then they go out to Ohio for a time. Eston uh, decides to go into the white world. He changes his name to Eston Hemings Jefferson, E.H. Jefferson, and moves to Madison, Wisconsin. His children. You see it from the census in their Virginia, they are you know, colored in, in, in Wisconsin, they are white, and they're now Jeffersons. And they become wealthy merchants. Uh, their daughters marry into a very good family. Um, and after a couple of generations, they lose the story of Tom and Sally. They become something else.